Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about graphing uh, logarithmic or log functions. We're going to do so using the graphing calculator. For this first example, they say to graph f of x equals log base 3 of x. So we're just going to, I'm going to show you the steps of how to actually do a table, graph it, and then we'll answer some characteristic questions about the graph. To start with, I'm going to pull out my graphing calculator, cut it on, and you're going to want to go to your y equals so that we can type in this equation to get our table of values. A trick I like to use is just hitting math alpha math. That's going to pull up that log function, so log, and you can put in your base and uh, put that value in. So for our base, we're going to put in 3. And then in the parentheses, we're going to put x. So once we have that typed in, we can just go to our table. So we hit second graph to go to the table of values. And I want to make sure I pick values that can fit on my graph. Um, but that also clearly show what's happening in this picture. So I'm going to choose uh, the points 0, or excuse me, 1, 0. I know that'll fit on my graph. Um, 3, 1. So I could graph these, but they're, they're decimals, so I'm going to keep looking. Oh, there's a whole number, 9, 2. And I'm going to stop there. Um, you may wonder why I didn't move up at all into the negatives, but notice these say error. I can't plot those, and we'll see why when we do the graph. This time I only had three points. That's okay. Let me go ahead and plot those. My first point is at 1, 0. So right here. My next point is at 3, 1. Right there. And 9, 2. And it may be difficult to see, now I know how this is going to look because I know it's a log function, but if you're just learning this, it might be difficult to know how that whole picture should look based on just those three points. So it's helpful to bring out that calculator and hit graph, and that kind of gives you an idea of what's going to happen in this picture. So it's also kind of hard to see on here, but we've got uh, this graph is moving up and then it's curving. So it's actually going to look like this. Okay, so notice how I had that nice curve up that would keep going up and out forever. And then I've got this, it's called a vertical asymptote. And it's basically this line that now approaches zero. In this case, it approaches x equals zero. And it doesn't, at least in, in this example, it doesn't actually cross that line x equals zero. It doesn't actually cross zero. It just keeps getting closer and closer to zero. So that's very, that's a typical characteristic of a log function that you'll see. So you would expect to find a vertical asymptote in a log function. And in this case, it occurs at this x equals zero line right here. So let's walk through some characteristics of this graph. So first thing that you're probably going to get asked is what's the domain? Remember we meet, we read domain left to right. So when I come through on the left, uh, notice I kind of hit this like wall almost, this vertical asymptote. And we have to be careful because I know that it approaches this line zero, but it doesn't actually equal zero. We would show that as the first thing I hit is zero, but it doesn't actually equal zero, so we would give that zero a parentheses mark. And when we come in from the right, the first place I hit is an arrow, and it's an arrow on the right, so that is positive infinity. So that would be our domain. And when I do range, remember range goes from, that's our y values from the bottom through the top. So when I come up from the bottom, the first place I hit is an arrow going down. Um, so we're going to call that 
negative infinity. And when I come down from the top, I also hit an arrow, and I know that this arrow is going to keep going out and up forever. We would call that positive infinity. Another way of saying negative infinity to positive infinity would be this all real numbers uh, symbol. That's another way to say the same thing. So if you're confused on what I just did there and you're like, what, what is she talking about with domain and range? You're going to want to stop and actually review my video on interval notation for domain and range. Um, so stop and review that if you need to. For our asymptote, they're asking what is the equation of the vertical asymptote in this case. So it's this wall that's created right here where we get really close to x equals zero, but we don't actually cross it. It's kind of like there's an invisible line right here. And they just are asking what is the equation of that line. And the equation in this case, because that vertical asymptote is happening right here at x equals zero, the asymptote is x equals zero. For our end behavior, typically when we've done end behavior for every other type of function up to this point, we've always had these two filled in and we were saying what y was doing. The y's are where the blanks were. We read this as as x approaches what y approaches negative infinity. That little arrow means approaches. So I kind of read with the log functions, read it backwards. So we're saying as y approaches negative infinity. So think about our y values. So they go to negative infinity this way and they go to positive infinity this way. So we're saying as we move down, what's happening to our graph picture? right, this curve that we've created. And as we can see, what's happening is some people may say, well, it's going down forever. But technically what's happening here is it's approaching zero forever. The way we would say this is as x approaches zero, y approaches negative infinity. And then for the second statement, we do the same thing. We'd, we'd kind of read the second part first. So as y approaches positive infinity, as the y values go up, what's happening to the picture? Is it going to continue to increase over time? Yes. So we would say as y approaches positive infinity, x approaches positive infinity. Okay, let's look at another example. So we're going to be doing the same thing with this one. Um, they've given us a log function. We're going to find the table, graph it, and answer some characteristic questions. Uh, so first thing we want to do is go ahead and bring out that graphing calculator so we can find out what our table of values is. Uh, we're going to want to go to our y equals, and we're going to type in this equation. So again, if we hit math, alpha, math. That's going to pull up your log function both in our y equals and in our home screen. You can hit that as well, math, alpha, math. But now that we've got it up, so we're going to type in what they have. Now, this may look harder because you're thinking, oh, man, I've got a, a fraction in the base. I hate fractions, right? <laughs> but it, it's the same concept. Okay, we're just going to type in the base. So you could use parentheses or not, just in this case, one half in the base. And then... Um, of x, so x goes in our parentheses, and then notice outside the parentheses they have this minus one. So it's really important that we come out of the parentheses for the minus one. If we leave it in the parentheses, it's gonna give us a totally different graph than um, what they're intending to show us due to different types of transformations. We wanna make sure we come out and do that negative one, and then we can get just a general look of how the graph is gonna look just by hitting graph. Sometimes that's a good starting place. Okay, so this one's going to be facing kind of the opposite way from the one we just did a minute ago. This one's starting up here, it's coming down, and then it's curving out. So let's go ahead and go to our table of values. And remember that you want to pick, I don't want to go up into these errors, okay, that's where our asymptote is, but I do want to start with the first, first point that I can plot, which is 1, negative 1. And I can plot 2, negative 2. And I don't want to plot that one. Let's just stick with the whole numbers. 4, negative 3. Not to say I can't plot decimals. I can, but they'd be estimations. And let's do 8, negative 4. That'll fit. 
on my graph and then I could look for the next one but notice the next one's all the way at 16 negative 5 and my graph doesn't doesn't go to those limits so we're gonna stop right there and again we've got that nice picture if we need it how the the picture should look once we put it all together but let's go ahead and graph these points so we got one negative one one negative one two negative two four negative three and eight negative four And again, if we just need a reminder, you can look at that picture. I know this should curve as we see, but then it needs to approach that y-axis, but not actually cross it. So we would show that by doing this. So it's not perfect, but we get the rough idea. Notice again, we've got this nice curve down here. And then we have created, this is called again, a vertical asymptote where this gets really close to zero, but we're not actually crossing it in, the, in this example. So for our domain, when we go to figure that out to answer these questions, remember we read domain left to right, we hit this wall, and I could see some people, and I probably should have pointed this out on the last one too, but I could see some people being confused like, yeah, okay, there's a wall there, but there's also an arrow up there. But we've got to look at what's happening on the x axis, okay? So we're looking at x for domain. Domain means x. So Yes, that arrow is going up, however, it's not actually moving out beyond x equals zero line. So we have to be really careful there, but I see how that could be a confusing point. Um, but I always think of it just like if I hit a wall that's moving just straight up as this one you know, appears to be, then that's a wall. That's called a vertical asymptote. So in this case, when we do our domain, we say, well, the first place I hit is really at this x equals zero. Again, we would show that with a parenthesis zero. It's at the x equals zero, but doesn't actually cross it. And then for when we come in from the right for our domain, the first place we hit, that one's pretty easy, an arrow. It's on the right, so we call it positive infinity. For our range, bottom to top, so on the bottom, the first place we hit is an arrow. This arrow will continue to move out and down forever, so we would call that negative infinity because it's on the left. And when I come in from the top, at that point, that's where I hit that arrow that, yes, this will continue to move up forever. So we'd call that positive infinity. When they ask for the asymptote line, again, that they're asking about that vertical asymptote right there. And where does that vertical asymptote occur? It occurs at the line x equals zero. Now on both the examples I selected for this video, both of them happen to be x equals zero. Will the asymptote always be x equals zero? The answer is no. Um, the asymptote could be you know, it could be shifted anywhere on this picture based on whatever transformations that has occurred up here. Just for both these examples, it was x equals zero. Just want you to understand it's not always going to be zero. Again, with logarithmic functions, just like on the last one, it's just kind of easier if we start with the y part and then fill in the x part. So this says as y approaches negative infinity. So we got to think as y continues to go down forever what is happening on the x-axis, what's happening with this picture on the x-axis. So as we look at this picture, it's actually, a, x is actually approaching positive infinity. Now I know that feels weird because you're like, well, I'm moving down. Isn't that negative infinity? Well, you've got to think that the x values are forever going to be moving this way. And this way on our x-axis is actually positive infinity. So I know these are these end behaviors can be really tricky when we do log functions. So now we say as y approaches positive infinity, as y is going up forever, what's happening with the x? And again, this is where we have that 
vertical asymptote wall where it's approaching zero, but it's not actually zero. So we say as x approaches zero. That's what's happening. So as we move up, x is approaching zero. All right, that's it for graphing log functions. This has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.